welcome to another episode of Christian Answers. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and I'll be talking today on the topic of Planned Parenthood. Oh yes, I haven't talked about this at all ever before on Christian Answers. I haven't given my commentary on what is happening as far as Planned Parenthood being exposed for the organization that it really is. It's basically selling of fetal parts, aborted babies, uh, for payment. And I haven't talked about that before because I wanted to see what was happening, what was taking place. I know this is a political issue and it's generated a lot of controversy. I know that Planned Parenthood is on the defensive right now and they're trying to scramble and figure out what they're going to do uh, to save their public image but they are receiving millions and millions of dollars from the US government in order to procure abortions and they are also in the process of this whole system they are selling body parts baby body parts to medical research organizations and whoever will buy their body parts and that's bad that's really bad but it really isn't as bad as the fact that they are killing babies and so I wanted to just sit back and watch and read the commentary and hear the commentary and find out what other people were saying before I really jumped in and gave my commentary on what is happening now the first thing I want to say is anything that can hurt Planned Parenthood in my opinion is a good thing uh, anything that exposes them for what they are and they are a abortion provider uh, they are not what they say they are which is a women's health service there's nothing about aborting babies that's connected with women's health there is nothing about killing the unborn that you could categorize as health it is destruction it's not health now by a stretch of the imagination there are rare instances where a mother's life and the baby's life there has to be a choice made whether the baby lives or the mother lives and those are very very rare instances and so it is not fair to say that abortion is a part of a woman's reproductive health services or a woman's health services you cannot lump abortion in with a woman's health services because there is nothing at all related to a woman's health and an abortion in fact an abortion is harmful for, for a woman's health and that has been documented in the literature for many decades now and it's still being studied and it's still being demonstrated that it's very harmful for a woman to have an abortion there are many risks that are involved and so there's nothing healthy about it and there's nothing connected with a woman's health that you could call abortion part of a woman's health care uh, I know our government right now under the administration wants to lump everything together they want to say that abortion is part of a woman's health care they want to say all these things but they are not true because abortion is the murder of an unborn child and so this cannot be lumped together with the classification of women's health so when Planned Parenthood calls itself a women's health provider that is false because they are providing abortions and that is not really strictly a woman's health issue now the thing about uh, Planned Parenthood is that the literature will stress that whole women's health issue and they will use the women's health issue language but we need to be aware and we need to see through that we need to say hey that is not true that is not honest that's not sincere that is propaganda and there is a lot of propaganda that Planned Parenthood puts out now they are being caught in their own game because 
what has recently happened was there was an undercover video many undercover videos put out by an organization a pro-life organization that showed some of the Planned Parenthood affiliated doctors actually negotiating prices on fetal parts after they have performed the abortions and so this was all exposed this was a great embarrassment for Planned Parenthood and it caused a lot of controversy we are still seeing these headlines in the newspapers and we're still seeing television and radio news commentary on this it's also being debated in Congress there are plans now in many states to defund Planned Parenthood over this recent controversy about the selling of body parts and this is a good thing in my opinion because anything like I said before anything that hurts Planned Parenthood is good uh, this organization needs to be brought down this organization needs to be uh, defunded we need not to be giving any money to the advancement of abortion or even the promoting of abortion we need to defund every type of activity connected with abortion and Planned Parenthood is the ringleader in providing abortion in this country and so we need to defund it we need to uh, minimize it and if they want to confine themselves to legitimate women's health issues that's fine if they want to limit themselves to simply uh, giving um, pregnancy tests or equipping women to deal with different uh, issues that come up in their lives um, other than abortion fine then there would be no controversy and I don't think anyone would be protesting there would be no undercover videos exposing them there would be no debates in Congress over uh, defunding Planned Parenthood but that is not what they intend to do they want to continue on providing women with abortion access they want to continue on the promoting of killing healthy normal babies in the womb and they want to continue calling that women's health and so they want to convince the public that they are providing they're a health care provider they want to provide women's health and assist them in a better life well that is well and good if you take away the abortion part of it and so we need to continue to push it and press them and hopefully we can get them totally defunded until they're willing to drop the whole abortion agenda and just do what they say they're doing and that is providing women's health and so we need to press forward we need to encourage our politicians to continue to put the pressure on Planned Parenthood right now as far as I understand there are many states that are now in the process of either totally defunding Planned Parenthood in their state or greatly curtailing it and thereby crippling it as an organization so it cannot carry out its devious agenda of procuring abortions uh, and the killing of the unborn so we need to continue to pray and ask God to continue to work in this wave that's sort of there's momentum to, against Pr Planned Parenthood and there is a will now it seems like a political will in Washington to do something about this this devious and uh, devilish organization so we need to pray that that actually comes about that it's not just words it's not just rhetoric that actually this organization Planned Parenthood is either shut down defunded or made to change their whole emphasis from abortion and the taking of human life to helping women and providing health care benefits for women and not anything connected with this other agenda that they that they're famous for and so we need to continue to press that agenda and hopefully by the grace of God we'll be able to curtail abortions if we can't end it if the Supreme Court will not allow it to be outlawed then we can certainly curtail it and one of the big means by doing that is defunding organizations like Planned Parenthood well don't go away stick around for part two of Christian answers 
Well, welcome to part two of Christian Answers. My name is Jeff Short, and I'm talking about Planned Parenthood. I'm talking about the controversy that they found themselves in, oh, a few months ago when it was discovered that some of the abortion doctors connected with Planned Parenthood actually negotiate payment for fetal body parts of the babies they've aborted and then the money goes into Planned Parenthood. Now Planned Parenthood says that is simply a recovering the cost that they have to spend to do these abortions, but we all know that that's simply another way of, of selling body parts. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's way beyond just simply recovering expenses. They are actually making money on the aborted fetuses' body parts, and that's wrong. Now, one of the reasons why I took a long time to before I began to comment on this is because I at first uh, was not very impressed with the fact that a victory for the pro-life cause would be what? Um, Planned Parenthood stop selling body parts of aborted fetuses? I think we have to step back and see the big picture. Even if Planned Parenthood stops selling aborted babies' body parts, that still doesn't take away the, the greater evil that they're doing, and that is aborting babies in the first place. And so uh, I'm happy for any and every reason to defund Planned Parenthood because they're an evil organization, but I didn't get all excited about the fact that someone caught them selling aborted babies' body parts because even if they stop, that doesn't stop abortions. There needs to be something beyond that. Then I began to see how the, the thing developed in the na national conversation. I began to realize that, hey, possibly we can defund Planned Parenthood to the point where they have to fold. They have to go out of business. They don't have the money to support their organization, and that would be good for the pro-life cause because, therefore, they would not be assisting women in procuring abortions. And so even this silly, um, uh, somewhat minor thing of already using the body parts of fetuses to make money for Planned Parenthood, that can be used as a greater good to try to shut them down to stop abortions altogether. And so uh, I began to change my perspective and say, wow, this, this actually can be used for a greater good. We actually can do something positive in respect to ending abortion because this might actually lead to the defunding of Planned Parenthood. It might lead to crippling the organization so that they cannot bring women or lead women along to have abortions. And it would all have started just because of their silly and foolish practice of trying to make money off the aborted baby body parts. And so I began to see that, hey, there's a greater hope here than just simply getting them to stop selling body parts. Uh, because that in and of itself, like I said before, is not that great of an achievement. The babies have already been aborted. The babies are already dead. And whether the body parts are sold and whether they're not, it doesn't bring them back and it doesn't stop abortion. And that was my initial thought. As I began to see, like I said before, how things have developed, I began to realize that maybe we can get abortion uh, greatly curtailed by defunding this organization, this major abortion provider organization. And so we can actually use this really silly and foolish thing that they were doing against them and actually see uh, many, many thousands of abortions stopped because of the Planned Parenthood organization's overreaching of even the evil that it was doing. I mean, it's evil enough to abort babies, healthy babies, normal babies. These are millions and millions of babies over the few decades, uh, 20, 30 nearly 40 years now since Roe v. Wade, there are millions of babies who would be now adults. Uh, there would be millions and millions of people, uh, citizens, 
who are no longer alive because they were aborted. Now that's evil enough, and that is on the, the, the hands, the blood is on the hands of these uh, Planned Parenthood people. But to add insult to injury, now they are trying to sell the body parts of the babies that they've aborted, and that's an equal insult to the image of God in these children that they've killed. And so if, um, if we can get both of those things stopped, the selling of the body parts, and then also the ending of abortion provided by Planned Parenthood, that would be a major accomplishment. Now, there's something else that's developed, though, that is an attempt, as will be used as an attempt by Planned Parenthood to regain their image and regain their momentum so that they might not have to stop any of what they were doing. And that is recently there was a man that walked into an abortion clinic in Colorado Springs. I used to live in Colorado Springs. I can picture in my mind the city and this man, 57 year old man or so, he walked in there and started shooting people in the abortion clinic. And he killed, I believe right now, the tally is three and injured some others. He killed a security guard. And it looks like the motivation that he had when he walked in there was that he was disturbed that there were babies being killed, that there were body parts being sold. And evidently he had heard the news that has been around for a couple, two, three months now that Planned Parenthood was selling aborted baby parts. And that disturbed him. And also the individual, it seems, is disturbed because uh, his neighbors and people who knew him uh, communicated to the media that he was somewhat unstable mentally. And so coupled with the news about the abortion baby parts being sold, he walked in there and started shooting people. Now, what Planned Parenthood is trying to do with this event is to try to gain sympathy again for itself. And they're going to try to use this violent act by this man who was mentally disturbed, although he had a legitimate beef as far as his opposition to abortion and the selling of aborted baby parts. He is now going to be used by Planned Parenthood, sadly, as a means to regain its status in the eyes of the American citizens. So we hope and we pray that that does not happen. We hope that the media, which are all too willing usually to give Planned Parenthood a free pass, we hope that they do not spin this whole thing and turn Planned Parenthood, that evil organization that kills babies, into a victim and trying to gather sympathy for it, and then defuse the momentum that was actually and really taking place in our country against them. We pray and hope that this does not take place. We pray and hope that Planned Parenthood is and continues to be under fire and under pressure for what it is doing to unborn children. And so we just pray and hope that this one incident by this very disturbed person does not derail the efforts to defund this organization because it needs to be defunded. When you think about it in this country, what is taking place is taxpayers are being asked to support something that they find morally repugnant. In other words, we're being asked to help pay for the abortions and support abortions, the murder, the killing of unborn children. We're being asked to do that. We're being asked to fund Planned Parenthood. Our tax money is being asked to fund Planned Parenthood against our moral objections, and that's wrong. And so we need to have this stop. It never should have stop, uh, begun anyway, and it should be stopped immediately. And so let's pray and hope that this this, this expose, the, the movies, the films that were taken, the undercover video that exposes Planned Parenthood, we pray that this would be used against them, that they would eventually be defunded in all the states, if not all the states, most of the states, and that that would greatly reduce the number of abortions that take place. Well, don't go away. We're going to be back for the third and final commentary on Christian Answers. 
Well, welcome once again to the third and final segment of Christian Answers. My name is Jeff Short, and I'm talking about the recent uh, controversy over Planned Parenthood, the organization, <clears throat> excuse me, and some of the other things that have cropped up, uh, this latest shooting at an abortion clinic. And so abortion has been front and center in the news recently, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's, it's a bad thing in the sense that we see vigilante citizens taking the law into their own hands, like this man recently walked into an abortion clinic and started shooting people. Um, we, don't, we don't promote that kind of thing, and we don't want to see that kind of thing. We want to end abortion with the prayers and the efforts and the activity of Christians who are working in a godly way to end this and all other kinds of evils that we see in our society. We do not want to see individual vigilante people uh, take up um, arms and just begin to shoot indiscriminately at people and organizations that they think um, they can make a difference by, by doing violence against. <clears throat> we want to see the power of God through prayer, uh, through um, efforts to try to persuade our fellow citizens that killing babies in our country is wrong and that we need to draw a line. We need to draw a line uh, between life and death and we need to not cross that line. And what we're seeing is that there is a will among more and more people to draw that line and say, no, we're not going to promote abortion anymore. A, a little recap, a little summary of what is, is taking place in the pro-life movement recently is that we've had many victories due to the fact that politicians are willing to listen to the people and curtail access to abortion because more and more people are realizing that whatever it is, it isn't a women's health issue. It isn't something that should be classified under women's health. Abortion is totally different than all of the other um, medical procedures and medical and health procedures that take place in, say, a hospital or a doctor's office. Abortion is something different, and that is the killing. It's the taking of a human life. And so that should not be confused with health care issues, health issues, etc. Um, now, that, that whole understanding is taking place in our country, and we're seeing state after state curtail access to abortion. We're seeing there are some states where there are only maybe one or two places in the entire state that women can go and get abortions, and that's a positive thing. There should be there should be places, there should be states where there is no abortion access. There should be states where there's no place you can go to have your baby killed. There should be states and the Supreme Court, if we can have our will uh, as pro-life Christians, there should be a Supreme Court ruling that states can decide whether they want to have abortions within the borders or not. And that would mean that some states uh, of the far left would probably allow it and then there would be most states that would illegalize it, would, would ban it. And that would be a positive step in the right direction. Of course, the ultimately, the ultimate goal would be for the entire nation, the entire all 50 states to ban abortion, to not permit it, and to see it for what it is, murder. The Bible says, thou shall not murder. It's a Ten Commandments. It's one of the, the most basic moral commands of the Bible given by God, and thou shall not murder. And so abortion is murder, so it should be illegal. We pray as Christians, uh, in the Lord's Prayer, we pray, thy will be done, thy will as it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. And we pray that, and we want to see the principles and truths that God has given us morally enacted in society. And so one of the ways that we can see this fulfilled is to ban abortion, and that would stop the murder of 
the unborn children in all 50 states. But short of that grand and ultimate goal, then it would be wise for the United States to allow the states to decide whether they want to have abor abortion permitted within the borders of that state. And if that were to be the law of the land that each state could choose, there would be most states, I believe, that would ban it. And so that would be a really good step in the right direction. Now, if that can't happen, then what is taking place now is a positive thing, and that is the curtailment of access to abortion. And we're seeing more and more states implement stricter and stricter laws restricting access to abortion. And that is a the most positive uh, thing to come out of the pro-life movement in the last few years. So we need to continue to pray that that uh, restriction of abortion continues, that momentum continues. And now with this controversial expose of Planned Parenthood selling fetal body parts, this will gain momentum even more for the restricting of abortion. And hopefully abortion will get to the point where it's so restricted that it's almost impossible to obtain an abortion and that would make it almost impossible for uh, babies to be killed in the womb if there is no abortion clinic that is accessible to the women who are going in for abortion. So that would be the, the next best thing that we could hope for. Now, we also have to be aware that the opposition, the enemy, Planned Parenthood, the pro-abortion movement, and much of the uh, radical uh, leftist progressive camp they are going to fight back and that's what they're going to do with this shooting recently in Colorado Springs they are going to use that and they are going to talk about that and they're going to say see this is what happens when um, pro-life Christians begin to speak out against abortion violence takes place etc etc well we need to answer their charges and we need to not allow their charges to stand because it's false. Christians are not violent. Christians do not uh, advocate violence. We do not advocate violence. We advocate prayer. We advocate uh, activism. We advocate pressing the argument. And that's how we see change taking place, not by violent means. And so we need to continue to talk to people, persuade them, show them that our motives are pure. We want to see the moral law of God for everyone in this country on abort, uh, to end abortion. We want to see God's will done, and we don't want to see our nation end in destruction of judgment for the sin of abortion. So I hope that that's got you thinking. I hope that that's helped you in your understanding of this complex and controversial issue, and we'll see you back here next week another episode of Christian Answers. God bless.